Welcome to the Habits to Goals podcast with Martin Grunberg. It's time to take control of your life. Are you ready to achieve goals faster and more consistently than ever before? You need the habit factor. You're listening to Habits to Goals, the podcast that helps you create the habits that lead to success. I'm your host, Nick Polkuski, and here is Martin Grunberg. Martin, thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the podcast. Thanks, Nick. How you doing? I am doing great. How are you doing? You sound like you're getting better, buddy. Well, that's good. That's good. <laughs> so what's going on today? Um, not a whole lot. Just busy working, uh, getting podcasts done, all that fun stuff. What do you? So what do you have going on in your life? What is your big GTR for this week? My GTR. He wants the GTR. So the first one is the podcast is... I'm going to give you two. I'll make the first one quick. The podcast is uh, still at the semi top of the charts, which is great to see. And the other is a bit of a mechanic story. Um, I'm not sure this is a, a GTR or not, but what I love is the way he handled it. And it's just something worth sharing. So I, I took in my truck to have a little noise, a little click, click, click removed. He changed some stuff out, put on a new belt, and I drove it away. And it drove like a champ for about 20 minutes or something. And then like a big boom, it turns out the belt, the belt snapped, it got caught up. And, and of course, I'm trying to pick up my daughter from a, a school event. And this is fortunate that it happened a quarter mile from the place. So the power steering stop, long and short of it is Jeez. I could barely get it to the school to collect my daughter, waited for a tow truck. I'm calling the mechanic and, you know, I'm wondering how this could possibly happen given that you just put new belts on and there was just a little click, click, click. Long and short of that is we tow it in, we walk in the shop and he says, he doesn't know, of course, my daughter's behind me. He goes, Martin, man, sorry, I effed up and I was just floored. I was just blown away that, you know, he could have said a million different things uh, that a mechanic might say and I wouldn't know the difference. But I was just floored by the honesty and the integrity and I told him, you know, it's all good. Let's just figure it out. So that's my GTR. There's there's hope for humanity. A great mechanic exists. <laughs> Well, that is, that is good. That, you know, and that's really just what you want from people is for them <laughs> yes, to be honest is. and, you know, to admit when, when they mess up, cause we all understand that, but you just want people to be able to admit that. Yeah. It turns out he didn't tighten something or something crazy and wow. Oh, yeah. It was nuts. Anywho. Uh, so we're going to dive into, I think the physics of personal productivity and relationships and what I mean by that, Nick, is, and I wrote about this in the Habit Factor, you know, of course, when I was drafting it up back in 07-ish, I even cite in the book, you know, some of Newton's laws. And, and my thought here really is that there's no reason if we're energy and our goals require energy, and I say this all the time, there's no reason these, these laws around energy don't apply you know, they, they only apply in the physical world and not when it comes to our personal productivity. Well, I'm actually seeing more and more that people are kind of picking up and there's some blogs about it. And I think it's great because of course they transcend. If we're energy, our goals are going to require energy, then, then something like Newton's laws and are going to pertain to our personal productivity and our relationships. So I just kind of want to go through a few of these and, and discuss them a little and see how they might apply and what we can, what we can learn from it. Sound good? Yeah, that sounds great. I, I, you know, being a kind of a science nerd a little bit, especially in high school, um, I love this topic and this whole aspect. I think that's such a cool way to really combine it, combine it. Well, energy, I believe the Latin root is something like ergos and, and, I looked this up for another blog post and really it, I think it essentially means the capacity for doing work. So energy is the capacity for doing work and what everybody's running around trying to do, whether it's blogging, writing a book, building a car is 
is via energy. So there, these laws have to apply. Um, I'm going to start this with a quote. I believe it's Mark Twain. What is man without energy? Nothing, nothing at all. And I hope I'm not butchering that too bad because that's actually from memory. But I mean, yeah, without energy, <laughs> we're, we're not having this conversation, right? So let's, let's explore energy, ergon, ergos. Um, anything you want to say before we dive in? No, let's dive in. Uh, and yeah, why don't you remind us, for those that can't remember, <laughs> what actually the first uh, law is? Well, that's pretty funny because <laughs> I'm just going to tell you. So for 10 plus years, I was trying to get a small staff to just remember the seven habits. So chances are good if they couldn't or didn't want to do that. Uh, yeah, we're all going to need a refresher on uh, Newton's, Newton's laws. So the first one is every object in a state of uniform motion tends to remain in that state of motion unless an external force is applied to it. So an object in motion tends to stay in motion. Sound familiar? Yes, it does. And, and in the context of the book, all I was saying was, you know, there's a great Japanese proverb that says the beginning is easy, continuing is hard. And I challenge that a little, Nick. What I'm suggesting is maybe the beginning isn't so easy. Maybe getting started. First of all, I don't know anybody who's finished something that they haven't first started. And I know that sounds rudimentary and maybe a bit stupid, but you have to, and it cannot be overemphasized, you have to start. Yeah. And so I think a large majority of the people pass up, they literally wave by the start because they're already so far ahead in their head thinking, oh, I'll never finish it. So why bother starting? And even in our last, in our last podcast, we, we spent some time talking about how so many people get stuck in this analysis paralysis. Well, that's the same kind of thing. They, they don't ever get the momentum up enough to actually start. And that's the key word. So, so if you don't start, if, if the law states a body in motion tends to stay in motion, if you don't start, you're not in motion. You can't move, right? Yeah. So when, when I was floating the draft around, my partner replied, you know, this is great because he said, this reminds me, it's that old saying, when you want to get something done, give it to a busy person, <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. You've heard that, right? I have. And, yep. and it's so true. I mean, the person sitting on the couch, who's so busy, right, isn't going to get it done. And then the person who's doing probably 8 million things, their schedule is packed, they're going to find a way to get it done. So the key, the key takeaway here is whatever it is you're thinking about starting, stop the think, stop the think part and do start, create momentum. And by the way, if you track, there it is again in this episode, you will begin to develop the momentum, use that par methodology, but you got, you have to, you don't have to do anything, but I'm highly recommending you start whatever it is. Anything else there? Or should we move on? I think we just need to start tracking how often we say track. Okay, perfect. I think it's great. <laughs> Maybe somebody out there can do that for us. I, whatever it is, it's not going to be enough. Yeah, you're that's not true. not tracking, you're slacking. How about that? I like that one. That's a tweetable. <laughs> um, so start, 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 start. The second one is a little bit harder. I'm going to try to condense it. The relationship between an object's mass, M, its acceleration, A, and the, its applied force, F, is the formula is simply force equals mass times acceleration. So to me, and, you know, this is open to, I mean, all theory is, is argument at this point or testing and, and, and proving and, and resubmitting. So, so I'm going to suggest to you that force equates to impact. And I'm going to have that definition in front of me. But let's think about this. The force, your impact, there's a lot of people that want to make an impact, is equal to the mass. Let's consider that the body of your work times the acceleration, which has various component parts. So it's obviously, it's best to talk in terms of an example. So 
Um, what is that that woman's the book, the children's book? Why am I blank in here? The kid's book. Harry Potter. Thank you. Good, oh. good work, Nick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> so, yes. so Harry, Harry Potter. Potter, massive impact, massive force. Yes or no? Yes. yes. Okay. And then the massive work. I mean, I was blown away when my, when my 10 year old daughter was reading an 800 page book. <laughs> I mean, and that's just one in a series of, I don't know how many. I think seven. Okay. See that? That's crazy. So she's reading books bigger than anything I've ever read. She's 10. And, uh, and then you think about the acceleration. You can think about that in, in relationship to how many books there were and or the readership and how word of mouth. And, and so you combine that massive work and that acceleration, you have a massive force, massive impact. If you look at some of the top podcasts, I'm sure – they're a top podcast because there's incredible consistency and there's this mass of work and there's probably acceleration in terms of uh, the listenership and the readership. Same with blogs. You know, Zen Habits has a pretty sick impact, massive force, and it's because you could, you could look at the mass, the body of work and the acceleration. So anyways, any thoughts on that? No, I, I think this is so true. And I guess what I'm wondering is how do you actually create some of that? You know, how do you create that body of work and that acceleration, uh, like in your life? Uh, you, you, you mean me specifically or the listener or anybody? So, Just so, anybody in general, maybe picking out, if you don't no, mind, maybe fine. picking I, out, you I, would be actually a perfect all, I example. Think, I think the, I'm a bit baffled at times by the impact or the force the habit factor has had. And then the flip side is I know it can be far greater. So the things I'd focus on are accelerating the, the podcast frequency, something you and I are working on, accelerating the, the uh, blogging frequency. I, I'm going to write another book. And so, and, and all that's increasing the mass, which is going to increase the impact. Is that a good enough uh, illustration for you? Yeah, I think that's a perfect example. Okay, perfect. Beautiful. Let's move on. Yeah, so what is our third law? Good question. Let me find it. <laughs> <laughs> for every action, and this is a beautiful segue to relationships because I promised it was going to be, what did I say? The physics of personal productivity and relationships. So this is it. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. The funny thing is, if I send you an email, what am I going to get back? <laughs> an email. If I call you, I'm going to get a call. So, so for some people, there's a lot of drama around trying to be, um, I don't want to mix this, so I don't know if I'm diving in too early on the relationship end, but, but the gist is, if I push or push back, then I'm going to get that equal and opposite reaction back. And Thomas Jefferson one of the great quotes that changed my life, I want to say about eight, 10 years ago, maybe more, three, dude, yeah, it's all a blur. At least, at least 10, maybe 15. You ready for this? Write this yeah. down. Always take hold of things by the smooth handle. Always take hold of things by the smooth handle. So for me, that just means you have the opportunity to... You know, friction creates tension. Whoa, that was special. Sorry about that. Um, so you have the option smooth or friction. And before you do something, before you say something, before you send out that email, ask, is this smooth or is this going to create friction? Now, I know some people get off on uh, this idea of drama and friction and I'm going to impose my will. What happens is two things. One is that's great, but, but that we talked about how this is all a derivative of energy. So if your energy is caught up trying to be right, it's not being applied towards your goals. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. So I just think that quote, always take things by their smooth handle. Where we go, always take hold of things by their smooth handle. And, and of course, Back to for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. That's that's really this idea of 
karma and the golden rule and things we've talked about before where kindness comes back to you. We see it. You, you see it in the natural world. You see it in the kind of supernatural world. This is this is kind of the, the laws of the universe, right? So those are the three Newtonian laws. And what maybe for our listeners, what would be the best way for them to start putting these laws into practice in their life or to really, you know, no, recognize them and use them the most effectively? Okay, so let's go through it. What's the first one? First one is um, an object in motion tends to stay in motion. So get started, right? We talked about it. You got to get mm-hmm. started. You have to, what, what I think we said is stop thinking about it and take action. Yeah. You have your plan at 85%, like our last episode. That's right. Mentioned. Take off at 85%. Stop the planning and, and take action. And then the second one is the force. Your impact is mass times acceleration. It also relates to making sure we, and, and in the last episode, we talked about the effectiveness is, is having that ladder on the right wall. So, so your force, your impact is going to be related to the mass, the body of work, this acceleration, and you, you got to start out making sure this, this energy is targeted in the right path. And I don't know how many times we can repeat ourselves, and I'm fine with it, but we do that by going all the way back to that obituary exercise or the mission statement, the vision statement, the values, that's going to help you direct your force or your impact. So that's two. And I'm glad you asked this. I, repetition is great. And then the third one is every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So if the goal is to conserve your energy and be efficient, and by the way, what is habit? It's the most efficient use of our personal energy, which is why it's so important to craft habits that align with your goals. So if for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, it's just being mindful about what you say, you know, whether it's with your spouse, your coworker, your boss, what you send out an email. It's, it's in my world, it's, it's, it's avoiding drama at all cost pretty much. Not because I don't like a good argument, but because I have limited energy and I want to place it and direct it towards my goals, not towards proven, <laughs> although my wife would probably uh, laugh if she heard this, um, but, but it's not about proving I'm right, right? <laughs> so there you go, well, buddy. No, I, I think that was very helpful. And I, I, like I said, I really love the fact that you just sat down here and think about some of the natural laws that are, that are occurring, um, and how they actually apply to us as human beings. Cause sometimes we can think that they don't apply, but they really do. So Martin, do you have any final words to kind of close us out on this episode of the podcast? I do. I talked, uh, in the last one about a Marine commander and hitting the beach at 85%, meaning just don't overthink because your plan's only going to be so good. And, and this one is a, a SEAL saying, which I was surprised. I loved it when I heard it, and then I did some research and found it was somehow tied to SEAL say it quite a bit. And it's just this. It's great if you're a golfer, too. Slow is smooth, and smooth is fast. Have you heard that one? I have heard it. I'm trying to... I, don't remember in what context, but yes, I have heard that. Well, if you golf, you can appreciate the, uh, the wisdom in that. Slow is yeah. smooth and smooth is fast, especially off your driver. So, um, yeah, I mean, at that point, I'll leave it with that. And then the tip, here's the tip. You were asking how the reader slash listener uh, might use this. Challenge yourself to not respond right away to the nasty email, whatever that may be. There's something, I, I, I'm, I'm directing it towards email. It could be a comment, but challenge yourself not to respond and see how, you go, how it goes and then let me know. At the very least, sleep on it. And then if you still want to respond, <laughs> go ahead. Or reply, the, reply in the email and don't send it and then reread it in the morning. So I don't know if that's a tip or a challenge or both, but 
But uh, yeah, have fun with that one. That's probably just a good life practice. Is what that is probably. Yes. So- Always take things by their smooth handle. And thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Habits to Goals podcast. I'm so excited that you could be here with us as we explore the habit factor and how habits can actually change your life. We'd love to hear what your big takeaways were from this episode. Simply go to thehabitfactor.com slash podcast. You can find all the episodes, all the previous episodes and the show notes there, as well as all the resources that were mentioned in this episode of the podcast. I also really want to encourage encourage you to go subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or Stitcher or SoundCloud or whatever podcast player you listen to, because we are delivering a brand new episode to you each and every single Monday. And I don't want you to miss a single one. So simply go to the habitfactor.com slash iTunes and leave uh, and subscribe there. We'd also really encourage you if you enjoy these episodes, the best way to show your appreciation is to simply go leave a review on iTunes because that helps so many other people find the podcast and realize that this is the podcast for them that could really have an impact in their life, their business, and in just their happiness and wellness. So thank you for tuning into this episode. Remember to go out there and create habits that lead to your success. If you're looking to grow your business using podcasting, but don't have the time to edit the audio, insert the intro and outro, write up the show notes, post the episode to all the different sites, and do all of the ridiculous back-end work that's required, then you need yourpodcastguru.com, where you bring the content and we take care of the rest. We'll even co-host the show for you. Visit yourpodcastguru.com right now to explode your audience and crush it in the podcasting world.